Hello, guys. How is it going? Sound check. You guys all hear me, right? Let's make sure. How is it going? Dead Orcs, how's it going? I see Yega Development is in here. I am so pumped to see you. Um, honestly, now I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> but I do have here Dan uh, Days Banefelt. Um, he's a creative director of The Cycle. Please, everybody in chat, say hi. Blow it up. Let's show them what we're all about. Dan, do you want to say hi? Hello, everyone. Very nice to be here. All right, guys, everybody can hear everything. I am so happy that you're here. Um, as you know, our community was one of the few that was invited to the closed beta of the Cycle Frontier, and we fell in love with the game. I mean, we absolutely were hooked on it. Um, I think I threw all my Warzone streams away just for like two weeks and grinded the cycle. So it takes a lot for a game to do that. And um, it's just really exciting that we were invited to that um, opportunity and that we get to have this moment today to ask him all the questions that we have been dying to ask. Thank you so much for joining us, Dan. Oh yeah, uh, it's my pleasure to be here and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm so happy that you did get hooked on the game. <laughs> I, I, I also uh, watched quite a few of your streams and found them like really, really awesome. <laughs> you were know, like... Continue. We, we, of course, like the whole team watched, you know, unhealthy amounts of Switch uh, <laughs> after we listed the NDA. Um, and I think uh, your streams were, were really awesome because they were this perfect balance of like wanting to to make it out with all that sweet loot. But and was like, will she make it? Will she make it? And you usually did, but it was always this like the uh, tension. And that's, you know, that's what the game is all about. So I was like, yes, it's working. It totally worked. And I think um, for me, I'm my community knows I'm not a variety streamer. I don't jump in between games. Mm -hmm. um, so that style of game to me was completely new. I had never you know, not only the style of game, I was also playing on mouse and keyboard for the first time. And then the game style was new. I didn't oh. know what I was doing as far as like, what are the objectives? And um, I just felt like a complete noob. So when you were watching my streams, you were watching a true first time player. Uh, you got true first impressions. Um, and I think that is what made it really fun for me too. Um, and yeah, it, it was, uh, I was very surprised to be hooked on a game that wasn't just about squad wiping and shooting the guy in front of me. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think it, it was uh, really awesome content. <laughs> <laughs> well, I loved, uh, I thought one of the things that made it very different from any other game I've played still to this day um, was just the proximity chat that you could talk to yeah. players. And like me, I knew I couldn't aim well enough on mouse and keyboard and I couldn't, I didn't know the mechanics of the game well enough to really go out there and just shoot somebody. So I would just beg, please don't shoot me, I have so much good loot. Uh, please let me go. And I mean, a lot of times, I feel like I had a lot of success. Yeah. No, that, I, I, it's also one of my favorite features because basically the whole, you know, our, our kind of creative mission with the game is for you to end up uh, in these really, really tense, uh, uncertain and dramatic situations. And I think the, what the proximity voice does so well, it's basically, you know, um, it, it opens up the range of things that can happen when you meet someone to be almost limitless and like it's it's crazy the, the kind of situations the players are <laughs> ending up in yeah and it was funny um because people were quite honest i would always ask are you friendly and they would say yes and then they were actually friendly um i remember i have a clip somewhere of me asking a guy if he's friendly and he said no and i'm like can please can yeah. you be friendly i only have a pistol like please he said, no <laughs> and then sure enough he came and killed me so i think it shows a lot about human nature too and like those yeah. relationships that you make just really quickly at least it was honest <laughs> yeah at least it was honest like, so um but yeah i mean i was overall i was just really impressed um obviously my community was a big fan of the game but it wasn't just my community so you guys released a video um saying you had over three hundred forty-six thousand prospectors so i'm assuming that's players on the on the map um and then you yeah. had so many hours played that it equaled 280 years of playtime. that blows my mind um so i was just wondering like were you expecting this kind of a response from a beta launch? To be honest, no, we, we didn't. I think basically what happened now with closed beta one is, kind of, is basically what we were hoping to happen with closed beta two. Uh, so it definitely blew up more than, uh, than, uh, than we expected. I mean, we were a bit careful as well, right? We started with an NDA and we were like, will people like it? We're not sure we think so, but we're not sure. And then it's like, Turned out, yeah, they seem to kind of like it. So we lifted the NDA and then it just took off from there in ways that, uh, yeah, we, we did not expect. 
Um, yeah. And the, I'm sure you noticed as well, like we had some tech issues as a result. You know, we had player counts that were way bigger than we expected. Yeah. Um, so it, we're really blown away by the by the reception and the and the, the way the community has been engaging with the game. Maybe keeping it so secret for so long really built up the tension. Like people were ready to go, you know, and when you released the beta, it was like, finally. Um, and I guess we just got uh, yeah, a little but... clue that you're going to have a beta too. That's what you just said. Yes, we, we, we are looking to have a beta too. Um, we're currently aiming for it to be around end of Q1 next year. Okay. Yeah. Because um, we, we're building some pretty big stuff, so we need, you know, we, we're really going back into dev land right now, looking at all the feedback uh, and data, and seeing uh, seeing what you know what needs to uh, what we need to, or what we should be working on, what we think players will love. Um, so we're looking to add some some pretty major new parts to the game, uh, like uh, something more like akin to campaigns with sequential missions, um, and part of that is also unlocking new we call them IMAs or in match activities. Um, so, you know, more uh, things like the meteor and mining. So we're looking to add uh, some pretty bombastic, like player player driven events to the to the match. OK, um, so what was the number one thing that people told you they wanted changed that you are going to be changing about uh, the maps or the game itself? Yeah, I mean, it, it's a, of course a wide range. Like we got a lot of feedback on on movement and weapon balancing and so on. But we did also ask in the survey um, what kind of larger features players players would really like to see and the top two ones were um, actually a bit, i was surprised by it but pve dungeons was the top one uh, and, and second most requested one was uh, was basically narrative campaigns so we're like yes that's what we're adding what do you mean <laughs> pve dungeons uh yeah we're, we're looking to add our first kind of pve dungeon um so yeah something you as part of the one campaign you'll unlock access to a to a cave or dungeon and at the end of it um will be a boss monster oh. with of course sweet loot um and we're doing it you know as everything with the game it's all about the risk of pvp so you're gonna have to go in there uh fight those monsters defeat the boss and get out and you know other squads might be waiting for you uh, by the entrance they might try to they might try to <laughs> to kill you as you're fighting the boss so you have to be really 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 careful so you go through all that work of like kissing killing all the monsters and the dungeon master and then you could still get shot by a camper <laughs> yes. on the way out yes so that... and that's that's what it's all about so higher stakes than ever <laughs> yeah yeah no i love that i love the vibe about the game you know it's like very fun and it's very intense so at the same time i mean i have clips where i'm going through all of the emotions of the rainbow just totally uh feeling all the things in the same minute so i it's great i think that's like Um, so I just, I took some kind of notes, maybe some impressions that I had, um, personally, the number one thing that probably caught my eye when I first played the game was just how beautiful the game was itself, uh, because there are, obviously, you know, there's other games like similar concepts, you know, like Tarkov or, um, mm -hmm. so, but all of those are like very dark games. So I, what I really enjoyed about the cycle is that it's a very bright game. It has a whole ambiance and like every section of the map is a whole completely different experience um, in and of itself. So I really appreciate that about the game. And um, yeah, I just want to say good job. And like, if you, I was asking if you had a hand in that or like how, what was your vision for the game um, as far as feel and. Yeah, yeah, I really appreciate it. I mean, we, we, with the world, we're really aiming to make something that is really, really immersive um and the world where we you know we balance this the allure of something really really beautiful and colorful but at the same time really hostile and like obviously dangerous like the planet does not want you there um so we're trying to walk this fine line of kind of uh, you know uh, yeah a, a dangerous but beautiful world um like too good to be true like it, it cannot be safe here <laughs> yeah yeah kind of <laughs> yeah okay well i definitely uh you were successful that i would um yeah, so I guess as far as the gameplay goes, um, one thing that I also noticed was that when you die, um, and I don't know if you've been asked this before, but it's, it keeps coming up so much in my community is like when I die, if I fit my teammates, I go back, uh, you know, to the headquarters and then my teammates keep playing and I kind of just hang out and wait. Is there some sort of plan in place like kill cam or spectator mode or? Yeah, uh, it's it's likely not going to be tackled super soon because uh, it it uh, it would require quite some dev effort but we do have in the plans to do something like a uh, at least that's what we're thinking right now like a defoam consumable 
Oh. So you'd actually be able to uh, revive foam squad mates um, if you bring this consumable. And of course, it'll, it would take you know quite a long, long time. So we, we don't want people to be reviving in combat and come back, but really like, okay, we won the fight uh, and now you can defoam your squad mate. So that's kind of what we're thinking right now. So it would have to be something that you craft or take with you onto the... Yes. Okay. That's not a yeah. given. So, you know, so, so as a squad, you probably want to have at least one squad mate with that, with that consumable. Okay. Is that going to be a high stakes item? I mean, like very rare or like hard to craft or is that... Gonna be... <laughs> I wouldn't say very rare, like, you know, I, th I think it's something you should be able to kind of craft regularly if you put in the effort to grind for those resources or something like that. Okay. So not not like a legendary item that you only get two per season. <laughs> so, I mean, that kind of brings me to my next question, because there were items like um, copper wire that I was always like, I need this for all of my quarter upgrades and things. Um, but it wasn't really that rare of an item, but I could never find it. So is there going to either be balancing or was I just looking in the wrong places or what the deal with that? Yeah, I think smart mesh was the even more uh, yeah. evil one in, in the beta one. Yeah, we 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 are um, basically we're doing a huge balancing pass on uh, on all loot availability and the recipes. So oh. we, uh, it's it's always interesting, you know, when you when you put out a game to real players. We're like, we we had no idea. We didn't <laughs> we didn't really, I guess, manage to find those issues by just playtesting internally because we keep resetting the progression and stuff like that oh. and i'm like immediately scared like holy crap smart mesh and copper wire they're way too way too hard to get so they're like the rarest items in the game okay so that's already on your to-do yeah. list that's not something yeah yeah, yeah. so we, we really want to get to a place where it's a little bit more clear where you find what but also what kind of risk you'd have to take um to to try and get it yeah that's going to rebalance to the way i think players so, like, if they always know that Smart Mesh is in this one spot and it responds quite often, then that'll be a lot more hot place on the map. Versus, uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, let me see. So, okay. Um, my also to go along with like spectating mode and things like that. Um, at the end of the match, I felt like I did really well sometimes, but I had no way of knowing because there's no scoreboard. So. Like, is there going to be a way to see your kills or your damage or uh, assists like that? Yes. Uh, we are adding something we call battle log, and that'll show you things like, uh, you know, who you fought, uh, what damage you did. So also, if you die, you'll finally be able to see, uh, you know, how close you were to, to defeating someone. Uh, and it, it's also one of the, the most requested features in the player feedback, for sure. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And, and um, it'll also give you, you know, you, you'll know who you killed, <laughs> which is something you you, you didn't in uh, in CB1. Yeah, right. Um, and I think like uh, going hand in hand with that, just because um, that'll allow you to improve. If you know, okay, well that round I did significantly better with this kills. Um, also having the kill cams, knowing what other strategies other players are using, what guns they're using, uh, things like that. I think it'll be. Yes, uh, yes, I think an important part there is being able to see to see the loadout as well. But kill camps is currently not in our roadmap, um, and I'm not sure what I think about it either. You know, we're we're not really a, a competitive game per se, um, but I'm not sure. I would be interested in the community's opinion on on, on kill camps. So, so my personal opinion is kill camps. Um, I that is my way of seeing if I was killed in a. But I consider a fair way, or maybe there's like a cheater or something like that. I don't know. One of my questions yeah, yeah. was to say, "What are you doing about cheaters?" Um, to me, I can't tell if someone is cheating if I have no idea how they killed me. I can't see the play. So that's yeah. why it's important to me. Yeah, no, I, I totally get the the cheater argument, but and this is something also we learned in CB1. Like, you know, as a, or I guess it makes sense even before CB1, as a game that is both free to play, and really really high stakes. Like we. Cheaters is really, really bad for us, <laughs> and we are doing a big push for CB2 before we release to, to yeah, basically make it very, very difficult to cheat in our game so that people don't do it. You know, it's just yeah. not, not worth the effort. No, and it, it takes away the fun of the game, and I think it really discourages you know, people to play. If yeah, I mean, it, for a game like us, it just completely kills the experience. So we, we're really trying to double down on, on uh, anti-cheat measurements. Okay, good. Um... What about like a, a solo or a duo game mode uh, with the next update? Yeah, this is a pretty hot, hot topic uh, where, but I, I, I really like the mixing of solos and squads. I think, you know, the game really is about 
like, like I said before, tension and drama. And I, I, I think it just adds so much to specifically those things, like not knowing if, if uh, people you meet have squad mates, um, and, and just ending up in these really wild situations with multiple players as well. Like many of my favorite situations were definitely as a solo player running into squads. <laughs> so uh, so I, I'm, I'm really, right now, I'm really thinking I want to keep it that way. Um, what strategy do you recommend if you're just a solo on the big map and you run into team score? And you have smart mesh in your pocket <laughs> and you need to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, three things. Always remember your safety pockets. Very important. Second, I think be sneaky. So I, I really, you know, really try to, you know, or be careful who you fight and when you open fire. And lastly, uh, you know, proximity voice can get you out of some sticky situations. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. I just, I guess, when you say be careful who you fight, I mean, if you're a four-man team and you have top guns, um, they're not going to care if it's a solo saying, "Please don't, don't kill me," or whatever. You know, they're just going to take them out. So I feel like maybe. That's a great concept for at the beginning when people don't really have that many things. But once players become like you know, really solid teams that are just wiping out everyone, it'll be a struggle for solo or duo. Yeah, um, and don't get me wrong. I think we we can and should do some things to to make it uh, to make it a bit more balanced. Like um, I, I'd really like us to add um, some tools for people to be more ratty when they're solo. Um, and I think we we can also use. Uh, matchmaking to at least avoid new solo players running into like totally um, purple gear squads. So how does uh, um, so matchmaking work? So we we already do have some kind of matchmaking where um, it's it's not based on kills or like KD ratio or anything like that. It's ba uh, it's based on your median value of loot you get out with from matches. Okay. So it's really about how good are you at prospecting? How good are you at getting out with valuable stuff? Okay. Um, and, and what we like about this is that we, we get a mix of people who are more sneaky, people who are more inclined to PvP, people who have go in with good gear, people who like to go in, you know, not, not put so much on the line. Um, because we want these different, um, different play styles and different player types to, to exist in the same world because we think they just add, add so much to the game. Uh, yeah. And it, it's kind of just a recipe for drama. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but so, and then we also have this persistent match. So, it, yeah, it, it doesn't try very hard. It's more like it looks all the servers, which one would be more likely to be a good match for you and just puts you on that one immediately. Okay. And how many games you said it takes like the median value of the loot that you escape with? Is it just from that day or is it over the course that you've been playing the game? Total, yeah, your, your whole prospecting career. For, oh. So forever. Okay. Well, ooh, will there be like a global leaderboard or something like that to show who is the best prospector? Uh, yeah, I, I think we we are adding statistics actually to to CB2. So that's one thing you'll be able to see. Uh, yeah, your career stats. Um, and I, I think it would be very very cool to allow you to to compare to friends and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Leaderboards is something I think we. I'd like us to look into, but be a bit careful about how we do it, um, because I uh, like the the fantasy of the game and everything. It isn't really about about um, winning a leaderboard, but I know that some you know there are players who would be really really interested in it. So I think if, if we find a way that it it doesn't become the main game, but uh, people who are so inclined can have an easy way to compete and compare themselves, I think that would be that would be really sweet. So I know you kind of touched on it earlier, and I was going to ask about this later on, but I guess a competitive mode is not really something that you're looking to incorporate. I mean, we, we are thinking about ways to maybe allow, you know, clans to, to compete in some way. Um, but we, I mean, we really have to find our way of doing that. So it, 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 we're not going back to something like Old Cycle, which is really more like an eSport match. Um, but I think I think there, we we are a game that has opportunities to compete on a meta level. Uh, for example, you know, clan versus clan or whatever it might be. Yeah, that could be actually very fun, or like maybe custom game. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, as I mentioned earlier, the aesthetic of the game was really what struck me first. 
Um, and along with that, I think I like the idea, like the skin shop was not open yet and like the battle pass and stuff. You couldn't really unlock any of that stuff. But I'm really excited about how nice everything looks and colorful and unique. You know, it doesn't look like other games that I've seen. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, but along with that comes customization. Um, I'm wondering like in the quarters, if you're going to offer more customization beyond just the upgrades that you make. Yes, um, this I think we have it in our roadmap, but it's not a cheap feature to build, and it's I think we have bigger fish to fry first. So I think it might be something for you know season th season three or so. Okay. Um, so right now we're working hard on on our CB two work, so that's the campaigns, the new IMAs, and then just in general improving the game all over. Um, and for season two, we are looking into really adding to the long tail of the game and the longevity and end game. Um, so we, I think we have we have a lot of work to do. What is the end game? Um, what what is your ideal version of this game? If it had all the things that you wanted. If it had all the things, uh, yeah. I mean, hopefully we'll we'll get to add to this game for a really really long time. So I think part of that vision is a game that keeps changing and uh, and offers new experiences. Um, but uh, I I think looking at kind of what pieces are missing right now. Um, I think we're working on on very important stuff right now, which has to do, you know, with variety of the things you do in the match, um, having more of a crafted player journey with, you know, more like directed progression. Um, and I think the what is missing at the end of that is uh, is more end game content. Like uh, we're looking to add a really really challenging map, for example, uh, where like you know top top geared players go in and are terrified to lose their stuff, and they are quite likely to not make it out. I think that's something, that's a big puzzle piece that, that's missing right now. Okay, so you're already thinking about that. <laughs> oh, yes, 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 yes. That's awesome. So is it going to so, be, uh, you're just developing this other map that's more difficult, or do you plan on having like a rotational sort of map thing? Are there going to be many maps? We are looking to have many maps. Uh, of course, we have to build them one at a time. Um, so right now we are we're still improving the the two maps we have. So they'll be uh, even more beautiful and uh, uh, and uh, you know smooth out gameplay wise as well for for CB two. Um, and then we're looking to add map three. And then I imagine we really expand that roster as time goes by uh, with maps where you know different difficulty. So we have maybe a bit more um, you know maps that really are, are geared to players in different parts of their of the player journey and, and also maps where you go in to really get like specific resources where you know if you really need Velta site you have you have a map to go to. Um, and, and maps that in general offer you know different experiences. Some might be more close quarters, um, more interior based, some might be you know more open world like the ones we, we have right now. Uh, so I, I think you know our, our universe and world just allows itself to offer so many different experiences like we're we're free to do whatever we want as a sci-fi game in space <laughs> yeah it, it, it does feel like that it feels like a very personal connection with the game and uh, all the changes that are being made it doesn't just feel like run of the mill here is a box with a game in it you know like i so i definitely feel that vibe from you guys that's what makes the game yeah um i was gonna say something i forgot <laughs> um are there going to be, I mean, this is like super minimal, but, it, you know, with Christmas time and stuff coming up, are there going to be little changes like that where you make seasonal changes to the map? Maybe it'll snow or in the summertime you know, or like the spring the flowers come out more like that. Oh, you mean like uh, like seasons almost? Yeah. Uh, uh, we haven't really planned anything like that, but uh, I, um, I don't see a reason why it wouldn't fit in the game, you know? Uh, I think that would be fun and makes it interesting. Always change. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. I mean, we, yeah, we we have the you know the dynamic weather cycle with the storm, uh, but it's something we can play more with for sure. Um, then on a whole nother note, I'm just seeing in the chat. Um, is this game going to be offered on Xbox or like PlayStation, something like that? We are looking to add it to consoles, but uh, right now the focus is on PC. So we we want to make sure we get that right. Uh, but hopefully it won't be too long before we start console development. That's that's the current plan. Okay. Which I'm of course extremely excited about. Yeah, it would be exciting to have uh, crossplay enabled. I don't know. I mean, I'm hoping that yes. would go hand in hand with that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and I, I think it's there isn't really a lot of similar experiences on console right now, so it uh, it seems like a pretty pretty good opportunity. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, so do we have an idea of when the actual full game is going to be? Uh, we have rough plans. Like I said, we, we're looking to do CB2 roughly end of Q1 next year. Um, so depending on how that goes, the release shouldn't be too far away. Okay. Um, but I mean, we, we, we try to be both honest but flexible and agile. So we, we really have to look at how, how it goes next beta. Okay. And of course, if there, if there are obvious things we have to fix, we'll do that. Um, That's great. That's important. But, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. But if everything goes well, it won't be too, too long. Okay. And, uh, you know, obviously it's a PC game, but people in chat are also asking about it being potentially a Linux or a Mac uh, compatible game. Ooh. I don't think we have any such plans, but uh, it's, a, it's a good question. Uh, I don't believe we have any plans for it right now. I think basically get PC right and then consoles. Okay. Well, um, let me see. I mean, I have, I skipped over a few things if we want to go back and touch on these things because you had mentioned earlier um, that plans were going to be a possibility. Um, is there any idea about having quarters for the team together that they maybe can all work toward? And will that be separate from their individual quarters or how does that? Uh, I think Clank Water sounds uh, really, really cool. Uh, it's not something we've decided on, but I think um, uh, for me, it's important that when, you know, if we do clans right, you would have some kind of common goal to work toward. And I know, like having talked a bit to the team about it, Clank Quarters is, uh, is one of the top ones. Or maybe to unlock like a unique vanity item for your personal quarter, you know, only attainable by working with others to achieve the goal. That might be yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, whatever it might be, I'm really interested in, in like I said, like common group goals with clans uh, working together to, to yeah, whatever it is. And would it been would it be then in, uh, possible for me to invite my friend, my quarters, for example, or um, to kind of show off, you know, every all the upgrades? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's also a pretty commonly requested thing. Like, I I think we again we have like bigger fish to fry first, but uh, uh, yes, I see us just doing that stuff as well. So um, what is your favorite thing about the game so far? Like, where do you really feel like the strength uh, of the cycle? Uh, my, my favorite thing is really uh, the mix of, uh, of an experience that is quite immersive, but where you also end up in these really tense and dramatic situations. Uh, and I'm really glad about that because it's, it's what we set out to build. And, I, and I, like I said in the beginning, when I watch, watch your streams and everything, it, it really feels like that's what that is what players are enjoying, and that's definitely what I'm I'm enjoying myself. Uh, really ending up in these, uh, yeah, I guess really stories that are really dramatic, where where uh, my experience is is immersive on one hand, but shaped by other players, and I think that's that's something very special. Right, like it's always changing. You're never gonna have just the same run over and over. You know, it's always gonna be a different situation. Yeah, yeah, like uh, one of my favorite things that happened in, in uh, CB1 was uh, actually, we, you know, we talked about it before with using voice to <laughs> to get by squads. And I had a, a bag full of stuff. I think I even had a smart mesh. Uh, and then I hear I hear his foot, footsteps and I, I heard there were two people. Uh, my evac is right there. I'm behind a wall and I'm like, please, please. I'm just a little solo. I want to I want to evac. And they're like, OK, fine. And I hear their disappointment. You know, they really were waiting there to kill people. I'm like, OK. Uh, and I call down the ship, we dance a little bit, uh, do some <laughs> emotes, and I forget where I am and the evac ship lands on me. <laughs> no. So I just die in front of them, you know, and I... Uh, <laughs> and then they went through your stuff and saw that you had Smart Mesh and all these goodies. I guess they, they did. I, I, can, I probably looked incredibly stupid. <laughs> That's hilarious. I mean, definitely a lot of flippable <laughs> moments uh, in this game, for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what was your best moment? <laughs> um... I, gosh, I have so many clips. I mean, this game is so full of content. Um, I think there was one situation where I was being followed by this team. They were just following me and yeah. I was begging them. because All my teammates had died. They had just killed my teammates, so they knew for sure that you know, I was by myself. And I was begging them, please. Don't. And uh, they said, okay, okay. But they were kind of following me, so they made me very nervous. And they weren't giving me... Good vibes, you know, like you just have that gut feeling yeah. like they're waiting for me to walk ahead so they can shoot me. So I decide to run. I'm like, nope, don't trust these guys. And I just run and I leave and I go to my evac point and I hadn't seen them in about a minute or something. 
And as the evac ship is taking off, like the doors are shutting like this, a guy pops out and starts just shooting me. And I saw my life flash before my eyes and I made it out. <laughs> it was just, <laughs> just moments like that where you don't know what's going to happen. You're like excited that you made it to the evac ship, but then you're terrified you're going to lose it all in the last second. And uh, yes, and that's what the whole game is about. <laughs> yeah, so it's just been super fun. Um, yeah, I don't know. Those are, uh, I guess, all of my questions that I had prepared um, on my end. Um, I know that chat is very eager to maybe ask a couple if you don't mind asking or answering those. Um, if I can find them. Um, Tails, yeah. So somebody wants to know how many people will be in the NDA testing group in the new one? I guess in the new beta, there's no NDA, right? Uh, there will be no NDA for closed beta 2, no. Okay. And how do people, how do my viewers get to these? Uh, well, well, I think we're looking to do, um, so everyone who had access to CB1 will have access to CB2. Um, but I'd imagine there would be different ways to, you know, get access like Twitch drops or, uh, or get, get it from, you know, of course, uh, apply for access. But uh, if everything goes well, I mean, we'll, we'll uh, move to open beta. Okay. Not long after. Okay, so there will be one more closed beta than an open beta and then hopefully the full release. That is exactly the plan. Yeah. Yeah, but everyone that. who had access to CB1 will, will get access to CB2. So um, it's going to be very exciting. That's already a lot of people. So. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Twitch drops will make it really easy. So. Yeah. Um, they are curious about your nickname, Days. Would you like to tell us about that? <laughs> My nickname? Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've had it for a very, very long time. Uh, uh, I'm not sure why why I, why I why I picked it in the end, but I, I, it's for my Unreal Tournament days, uh, um, like I guess almost 20 years ago now. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. So, is it kind of you go with your gamer tag is along those lines as well? You just never changed it. You've had it for 20 years. Uh, sorry. Do you incorporate it like with your gamer tags or your gaming names, and you just have never changed it for those 20 years that you've had this nickname? Exactly. I just I picked it 20 years ago when I played Unreal <laughs> Tournament, and uh, that's that. <laughs> that's impressive. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I've had. I think I must have had it since 2000, I guess, or even 99. That's when Unreal Tournament came out. <laughs> nice. Um, let's see. Um, is there anything that you want to share with us that maybe I haven't asked yet that you feel like is a very important thing for viewers to know? Uh, I guess. Only that I'm incredibly excited for CB2, and I look forward to yeah welcoming everyone back to to Fortuna 3. And I'm just um, yeah I really appreciate the the community and the feedback we've gotten for CB1. Not not only the reception but also the feedback. So um, yeah, I really want to keep up that that relationship and the and the close connection to the community because it's been incredibly helpful. So is the best way to give you feedback um, for anyone who participates in the next beta um, through your Discord then? Yes, Discord is the best place because then Feralus and the community team, they basically uh, compile all of it and make sure the dev team sees it. So we, re we, really, we really have a close eye on the feedback from Discord. So you have a list of uh, problems that people identify and you tend to go through it, or is it the most reported? Or Yes, the, uh, uh, really, we, during CB1, we got, like Feralus and the community team compile weekly reports of the feedback. So we get a good idea of... Uh, you know how often something's mentioned, how severe something is, and then we we look at it really closely in the design team uh, and talk about what we want to do about it. Um, so one thing that I just remembered um, that I had a problem with uh, the second map. Um, what is it called? What is the more difficult map? Oh, well, what, regardless, on on the second map, uh, the more difficult map. Mm -hmm. I found that there were um, areas of the map where you could not access it. Um, specifically in the northeast side of the map, there would seem to be like invisible barriers, um, no throughway situations like that. Is that something that was pointed out before, or is that? Yes, that, that was really one of the most common feedback points. Oh. Uh, and I know the maps team is working on uh, on specifically that right now. So uh, for CB2, it'll. Uh, yeah, Crescent Falls is getting a pretty Falls, pretty yeah. big uh, level design update. Okay, I'm excited about that because I really enjoyed that map, but I was quite afraid because mm -hmm. I knew if I had a lot of loot and if I caught myself in one of those little corners that I would be doomed. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
no, no, we're looking to improve it um, quite a lot. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm and really it'll be excited. even more beautiful as well. Okay. <laughs> Who's responsible? Uh, what What are you responsible for? Uh, are you part of the aesthetic vision? Of, you know, the overall look of the game. Um, I mean, we we have an art director who is more, you know, the the person who should <laughs> get more of that credit. Um, so, but I'm basically responsible for crafting more of a um, high level vision and concept for the game, uh, and uh, equally important, making sure that the team knows what the game is all about, so that we're really building the same game and we know what it's about. Um, okay. So you have the big vision, and they complete the part to make it. Yeah, and of course we work closely together. So I, part of my vision is, you know, really hammering in on this drama and tense, tense uncertainty and the suspense, uh, and uh, the art vision is developed to support that. So that's where we get to, into this, you know, balancing the the beauty and the color with the uh, with atmosphere and and tension and and even darkness. Interesting. Yeah. I mean. Um... Yeah, I just, I really appreciate how bright the maps are. It feels like an escape uh, from other games, from real life. You know, you land on Kotona and you're just like instantly, okay, nice. There's an ambiance. You know, it is, in a way, you know, you mentioned there's a lot of tension and all these emotions, but it is very calming and uh, it's a vibe. So I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, what I want is a little mix, you know, where you might get a breather every now and then, but you're not, you're never totally safe. And, you know, around the next corner, your, your heart starts pumping. Yeah. Um, so we, you know, we want this really the the progression and the and the uh, ebb and flow of emotion. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, I think we succeeded in that very much. Um, yeah. I mean, the, the all the questions I have really <laughs> for you. Uh, besides, we want an Invicta skin. That's really the only thing that my community is asking for. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> okay. Well, let me know. Your people can call my people. Um, thank you so <laughs> yeah. much for joining me for the interview. I don't know if you have anything else to add. We'd love to hear it, of course. That, that, is, um, that concludes all of my questions. Yeah, no, uh, uh, really happy to be here. Uh, and yeah, um, like I said, I'm just, yeah, we're, we're really in the, in the development land right now, but I can't wait to, uh, to get back to, to playing with everyone. Like, Hey. The game also plays very, very differently when we play it internally. It's really hard to replicate the, you know, the tension and the drama with like uh, with the dev team. Uh, you know, I know who they are. Uh, we m might not have a full match because we need like you know to to keep our persistent s servers full. We need quite a few players. Uh, so, How many do you uh, have there the when you're doing the internal test? How many players? I mean, the the dev team is eighty people. Um, but so. But in a playtest, you know, depends on what we're testing. It might be anything from from uh, twenty people to 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 forty. Does it feel like work when you're testing it, or do you guys all just get caught up in it and just play a couple of rounds? And... <laughs> well, that's a bit what I mean. Like it, it feels more like work in the internal playtest, but playing CB one, then it really then it really started to feel like I'm playing a game for for fun. Uh, yeah. In in ways that yeah, again, it's hard to replicate internally. Yeah, you're doing a job that you love, and that's cool. That shows. And, uh, great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Um, I'll be sure to direct my community to the Cycle Discord uh, if they have any further questions. Or I know there's daily fact updates and uh, all kinds of things in there for them to look at. So that should hold us over until the beta, I guess. <laughs> yeah, we'll try to, you know, uh, um, keep keep up with content and everything until then. All right. Well, thank you so much um, for this opportunity. Yeah, thank you. Have a great rest of your day. Cheers. Bye.